Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Can I please have your attention? At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. This meeting will come to order. I am Michael McSweeney, the City Clerk and the Clerk of the Council. I hereby call this meeting to order pursuant to Section 42 of the New York City Charter. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Thank you. Please be seated. On the 11th of December 2017, the Council of the City of New York received, ordered, printed, and filed M565 of 2017, a communication from the Board of Elections certifying the election of all 51 members of the City Council in the 2017 general election. I now direct the clerk to call the roll of those duly elected members of the council for the purposes of ascertaining the presence of a quorum. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Sorry, present. Barron. Present. Brannon. Present. Borelli. Present. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Combo. Present. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Present. Drum. Here. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Present. Gordenchik. Here. Holden. Johnson. Here. Kalos. Present. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Present. Lander. Here. Levin. Levine. Present. Mizell. Matteo. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Here. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salomon. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Still here. Valone. Here. Williams. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Mr. Clerk, we have a quorum. Having recognized that a quorum is present, I now request that the council members please stand for the oath of office. Council members, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York and the Charter of the City of New York and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of council member 
In the state your district? In the state your borough? In the county of state your county? In the city of New York? According to the best of my ability. Council members, congratulations. Okay, I now ask everyone in the chamber to please rise for the invocation, which will be delivered by Bishop Silveta Gonzalez of the Q Kingdom Ministries in Brooklyn. Eternal and ever wise, true and living God, our Father and our Mother. Today we celebrate this pivotal moment in the history of our city with the election of our council member, the Honorary Corey Johnson, our first gay male speaker of the city of New York Council. Council member Johnson provides a crucial representation of courage, confidence, and success in his leadership role for our transgender youth and for those that are struggling under pervasive challenges of oppression and rejection. Most holy God, you are no respecter of person. You do not discriminate against your human creation. You are the God who loves all members of our humanity, including our LGBTQ future generation and our brothers and our sisters. You are the God who chooses ordinary people to do extraordinary things, therefore unveiling a glimpse of your divine force working in every fiber of our society. We are grateful that you have brought to our great city esteemed workers from various walks of life who are committed to stand up for the freedom and justice of all. You have inspired them to work together and set goals, pass legislation that enhances the development and sustainability of our New York City, the city we love. We beseech thee, O oh God, that you inspire our leaders in the City Council to make decisions that will bring relief to all members of our city who are struggling, all members, regardless of their race, color, religion, creed, or gender. Our great spirit of life and light and truth, we invoke your almighty presence to shower our newly elect and to shower all those profound members of the New York City Council. Give them your life-giving spirit. Fill them with love of truth, unshackle their optimism, and motivate their spiritual exuberance. Help them to walk upright, have mercy, and let justice roll down like a mighty stream. We invoke your presence to surround these magnificent leaders. Bring them together to be servants for the poor, providing for them the highest level of dignity in our great city. Show up, O oh God. Inspire their willingness to promote the highest good for their fellow human beings. Bestow upon them the power to perform their duties to obtain the ultimate benefit for those that are marginalized in our beloved New York City, the greatest city in the world. Show up, O oh God, and inspire leaders to speak on the behalf of the voiceless the underserved, the weary, and the downtrodden of our great city. Most merciful God, come in all your glory. Fill the chamber of the city council with your blessing. Fill it with your mercy. 
Fill it with your peace that passes all human understanding. Fill it with your love. Be not silent, eternal God, but be a silent listener to every conversation and a spiritual healer for every room. Show up, O oh God, in your mercy and bless us all. Bless our city, bless our council members, and bless the United States of America. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. I now recognize Councilmember Lori Cumbo to spread the invitation upon the record. Thank you. Good afternoon. I proudly recognize Reverend Hamilton Gonzalez, who is the founder, chief executive officer, and bishop of Q Kingdom Ministries, Inc. Q Kingdom is an interfaith, community-based organization comprised of the New York Economical Convocation, the Mystical Temple of the Rose and Flame, the Intercultural Awareness Council, the Education and Advancement Program, QK Scholarship Foundation, Women of Great Esteem Award, McAdemy School of Science and Technology, where students are educated, inspired, and advanced, QK International Student Exchange Program, and the Interfaith Academy. It is my hope and desire that my son will also attend McAdemy when he gets old enough. Bishop Gonzalez graduated summa cum laude from the College of New Rochelle, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Religion and received the Medal of Honor for Academic Excellence. She later went on to receive a New York Theological Seminary, where she received her certification in Christian ministry. The many facets of Bishop Gonzalez's mission are culminated in her synthesis of the spiritual, social, and political. Many political leaders throughout the city and this country go to Bishop Gonzalez for her guidance, for her counsel, and her blessing. She is a dynamic leader who has worked relentlessly to develop Q Kingdom Ministries and its subsidiaries. Bishop Gonzalez is also an internationally known, outstanding educator and motivational public speaker. She is an asset to our community. She inspires youth from all over the world. She's developing and creating each and every day the next generation of leaders in our city. And I move today that today's invocation by Bishop Hamilton Gonzalez, which was inspirational, powerful, and right on time for today, be spread in full upon the record. Thank you. So ordered. We now move on to M1 of 2018, the continuation of the 2014 to 2017 Rules of the Council as amended. I now recognize Council Member Margaret Chin. I move that pursuant to Section 46 of the New York City Charter that the 2014 to 2017 Rules of the Council as amended be continued and in effect until new rules shall be adopted or set rules shall be otherwise amended or modified. Thank you, Council Member Chin. All those in favor of the motion by Council Member Chin, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstaining? The ayes have it and the rules of the Council are continued and in effect. We now move on to the nomination of the Speaker, M2. I hereby open the floor for nominations for the office of the Speaker of the Council of the City of New York, pursuant to Section 44 of the New York City Charter, for the term commencing January 1, 2018, and terminating December 31, 2021. I now recognize Councilmember Inez Barron. Thank you, Mr. City Clerk. It's time for a black speaker. In challenging situations, for models and for inspiration, I look to historical figures in similar contextual circumstances. 46 years ago, the radical Shirley Chisholm became the first African-American woman to run for president. She said she ran because somebody had to do it first. In her book, The Good Fight, she says, quote, I ran for the presidency despite hopeless odds to demonstrate the sheer will and refusal to accept the status quo, end quote. 
Mrs. Chisholm spoke about the revolutionary possibilities of electoral politics. When asked if more women, specifically black women, should become involved in electoral politics, she said yes. Quote, women in this country must become revolutionaries. We must refuse to accept the old, the traditional roles and stereotypes. She said, quote, what made me decide for run president was that I felt the time had come that a black person or a female person could and should be president of these United States of America, not only white men, and I decided somebody had to get it started, end quote. Her sentiments express my feelings that it's our turn for a black speaker. Some members of the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus said that they had a preference for a person of color as speaker for the New York City Council. And there were several candidates. But when the black candidates for city council would not commit to come to this day when the nominations and selection for speaker occur, it erased all possibility for a black speaker. I had declined a request to run, and it was not my initial intention to be a candidate. But the realization that there would be a return to the structure that had so long dictated who the nominee would be created a void that compelled me to submit my name as a candidate. White men, white women, and a Latina had been speaker. But we have never had a black speaker in this a city where black, Latino, and Asian are the majority. Like Ms. Chisholm, I felt the time had come for a black speaker. Again, citing Ms. Chisholm, quote, I think it's quite well known that I do not enter most things with the blessings of any party. Anyone who's followed my political career knows very, very keenly that I am the only unbought and unbossed politician, and I mean that literally. I think that you have got to recognize that I'm not white, not male, and that I'm not going to get the blessings of the power structure of this country. They knew I was not afraid to chart a new course in the history of this country, end quote. Now, here in today's charter meeting, the results of the vote will soon be recorded. I am proud to have taken actions that call for a paradigm shift. I have, I have picked up the baton and have brought it across the finish line to this day for the vote of speaker. Once before, in 2010, another council member, Charles Barry, my husband, put his name in nomination for speaker. And I now adopt that strategy. In this city, which labels itself progressive, it is unconscionable and unacceptable that in 2018, the Democratic Party has resurrected the vestiges of racist chattel slavery, segregation, and Jim Crowism, and has conspired to prevent a black person from becoming speaker. In 2018, we should not let them take the black vote for granted. Today, we have an opportunity to refuse to accept the status quo, the dictates of bosses, the directives of masters, and the influence of cronyism and the machinations of backroom deals. Dr. Martin Luther King said that, quote, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter, end quote. Well, I say race still matters. Some will loudly decry its presence, deny its presence. Others may tacitly acknowledge its grip. Others will deathly be silent. But I say that racist policies and practices are embedded in every facet of the social, political, and economic institutions and systems of this country. And until we face that reality, the results will continue to yield disenfranchisement, underrepresentation, and oppression of black and brown people. At her eulogy, Ms. Chisholm was described as a person who, quote, stood up and spoke up, end quote. I extend to each of you the opportunity to be an upstander. Irrespective of your vote today, I call on you to stand up now for the right to be a trailblazing, radical revolutionary. Irrespective of your vote today, I call on you to stand up for the right 
to call out racist policies. And irrespective of your vote today, I ask, are there any among you who will stand to support my right to be a nominee for Speaker of the New York City Council? Is there any? Is there one? Thank you. And with that, Mr. City Clerk, I proudly submit my name, Inez Barron, as a nominee for Speaker for the New York City Council for 2018. Let's make history. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. I now recognize Councilmember Lori Cumbo. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here once again for another four years. I want to salute Councilmember Barron for her decision to decide to run. Uh, running for office is certainly always a challenge. And to me, growing up, you as well as your husband have been living legends in almost every African-American household in New York City and beyond. And so I recall very clearly when Councilmember Barron uh, ran for speaker. And in my mind, being on the outside looking in, I couldn't understand why the body would not support Councilmember Barron. He's qualified, he's here, he's present, an outspoken voice. And now to fast forward, I was very proud, just to take it back, when Councilmember Jalissa Ferreras Copeland decided that she wanted to run. Instantly, because of her track record, um, finance chair, a dynamic, powerful woman, former chair of the Women's Issues Committee, she ultimately became the front runner. And this body, very collectively it appeared, had almost decided that that was going to be the decision that they were going to make as a body. And it showed to me that we were an evolved body, that a black woman, an African American man, a gay white man, a straight gay white woman, whatever the situation is, everyone has an opportunity to serve here. So in my opinion, from what I've seen in the four years, everybody has the opportunity to be able to serve this body. I was very upset when Councilmember Johnson appeared to become the front runner. Everything was uh, attacked about his identity, that he uh, is a, a substance abuse survivor, that he comes from a single parent household, that he comes from public housing, that he's gay, they challenged his educational career, that he grew up in public housing and that he was HIV uh, positive. These are things that while many will say are things that he shouldn't be a leader, in my estimation, those are exactly the reasons why he should be a leader, because he has overcome things that many of us would have been, had our whole world rocked by. How many of us here think honestly that if we were HIV positive, that we would be able to come forward and utilize that as a platform to inspire individuals to get tested, to provide uh, resources and critical uh, services that so many in our community need? I think that Corey coming out and becoming from those challenges, one of the youngest people to become chair of his community board, to run the campaigns of uh, candidates like Mark Green and H. Carl McCall, for him to be one of those individuals that at 17 years of age came out that he was gay um, on his football team. These are all things that he's been challenged by, but it's not where you come from, it's where you are today. He has been a progressive voice in this particular council. He has passed legislation uh, in regards to domestic violence, runaway teens, HIV and AIDS, housing, substance abuse, homelessness, and so many other issues. And so for us, as a black, Latino, and Asian caucus, I too would like to see us have a black or Latino or person of color to run this body. But we have to take accountability for some of those issues as well. In our body of the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, we had seven members running. If we wanted to be serious about a candidate emerging from our body, we should have proposed to elect one person that we would have all stood behind for the last year to get to that particular place. So there's accountability on our end. We would have run a year-long campaign that would have held and supported. I'm here in this body, and the work that I do as a council member is because 
I'm working to make sure that there is equality across the city of New York. And those that work the hardest are those that are rewarded. And I believe that everyone in this council, in this body, cannot deny that Councilmember Corey Johnson worked harder to become the Speaker of the New York City Council than anybody in this body. And because of that, he is qualified, he has demonstrated that he has put the work forward, and he has demonstrated that he can help, assist, and work with members all across this board, whether you're black, white, Asian, gay, or straight, he has demonstrated that. And it is because he's worked harder than anyone else is why I nominate Corey Johnson to be the Speaker of the New York City Council. Thank you. I now recognize Council Member Karen Koslowitz. Thank you. In the four years that Corey Johnson and I have worked together, I have learned a lot about him. Corey is strong, independent, honest, and trustworthy. He has been my good friend and a fierce advocate, always a voice for those who cannot be heard. I know that he will lead this council with fairness and integrity, and he will work with the mayor and the administration to make this an even greater city. I have served as a member of the New York City Council for 19 years, and it gives me great pleasure and fills me with enormous pride to second the nomination of Corey Johnson as Speaker of the New York City Council. I now recognize Councilmember Robert Cornegie. Thank you, Clerk. As a black man and as a person who actually ran for Speaker of the New York City Council and by all accounts ran a fair and hard race uh, and actually was a runner-up, I resoundingly second the nomination of Corey Johnson for Speaker of this Council. I joined this distinguished body of legislators in the same class as Councilmember Johnson four years ago and have had ample opportunity to observe, his, to observe his leadership style. One I believe leaves him well equipped to serve this body as Speaker. I look forward to working closely with Speaker Johnson for the next four years to ensure the full extent of the Council's resources and powers are brought to bear in addressing the needs of all New Yorkers. Thank you. I now recognize Councilmember Mark Traeger. Today is a day of celebration, and it is with great joy that I second the nomination of someone I'm proud to call not only my colleague, but also a friend, Corey Johnson. Everyone who knows Corey knows that he is hardworking, intelligent, and unbelievably driven. Most importantly, he's a fighter. Corey will never back down from doing the right thing, because it's the people he's fighting for. Corey has always been an advocate for people whose rights are often blatantly disregarded. He has made tremendous strides for the LGBTQ community. This is one community like far too many others that has historically been marginalized. But Corey is the type of leader who fights to make sure everyone gets a seat at the table. Our city knows that Corey will continue to be a voice for all New Yorkers, this is because Corey just doesn't just talk about it, he gets things done. As his colleagues, we know this, and we have seen it time and time again. His strength is evident in the actions he takes to make sure no one slips through the cracks. He has true grit, and he works hard every single day to make sure the city is stronger and more fair. He's a voice for young people, especially working to serve our city's runaway and homeless youth population. He approaches legislation with a long-term view and a true progressive vision. He cares about the health, wellness, freedom, and happiness of the people of our city, but above all else, he cares about fighting for the rights of New Yorkers who are too often ignored. I'm proud to have gotten to know Corey over the past four years and witnessed firsthand his effective leadership. With all the threats our country faces on a national level, it is an amazing relief to know that we have a true progressive who is representing our city council. 
Corey doesn't look to divide, he looks to unite. He knows how to bring people together to build a city that is better for all New Yorkers. When his inclusive, honest, and courageous hard work met opportunity, the well-deserved speakership of Corey Johnson was born. Congratulations to the next speaker, Corey Johnson. I now recognize Councilmember Richie Torres. I first heard the name Corey Johnson 18 years ago. It was the year 2000. I was 12 years old, and I stumbled on a 2020 documentary featuring a young Corey Johnson, who was captain of his high school football team, found the courage to come out publicly in a conservative small town. He did so in a place where coming out could have meant painful ostracism from the only community he had ever known. I remember listening intently to Corey's story as an adolescent coming to terms with my own identity. And I remember being inspired then by his courage. Never once in those years did I imagine serving under the leadership of the very trailblazer whose story inspired me nearly two decades ago. But here I am, here we all are, on the verge of elevating Corey Johnson to the speakership of the New York City Council. Corey's self-willed rise from small town poverty to political leadership in America's largest city. His rise reminds us that we are not simply selecting a speaker, but by voting for Corey Johnson, we are co-authoring the latest chapter in a bona fide American dream story. What is most inspiring about Corey is not so much his rise to the speakership. It is where he has risen from and how he has risen. It must be said, lest there be any confusion, that Corey has not only won the speakership, he earned it. He earned it on the strength of his incomparable work ethic. He earned it on the strength of the deep and durable friendships he forged in the trenches of public service. He earned it the same way he has earned everything in his life, by working for it, and by working harder than everyone else around him. Corey Johnson is a formidable public servant, and the city of New York will be stronger for having him as one of its leaders. I am honored to call him my colleague. I'm even more honored to call him my friend, but I will be most honored to call him my speaker. Mr. Clerk, I proudly second the nomination of Councilmember Corey Johnson as the speaker of the New York City Council. I now recognize Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez. Thank you. First of all, I would like to say happy birthday to my daughter. Uh, and as the great leader of the city of New York, Scott Stringer of Control is say, he was here when he was a little boy. Now my daughter is here. You know, I have mixed feelings today. It's a sad day. We lost the only position that we have as a Latino in the city of New York. My daughter has been raised knowing that she's black, she's Dominican, she's American. At least in the American community, you can say that you have a minority leader at the Senate, you have a public advocate, you have a speaker at the Assembly. In the city of New York, Latinos made 29% of the, Latino of the New York City population, the second largest group. We don't have, we will not have the voice anymore. However, at a moment when we're losing that voice, the question is, who is the closer ally? I had no doubt. Someone that lived through the struggle. Someone, someone who knows what it is to be raised in a poor family. Someone who knows what it is to be openly gay. Someone who knows that everything has to be seen from the perspective of social class. We need to look ourselves from that, from in, the, in, the, in this room here, and look to our faces. Only in this great city, we are building this great, institution with the diversity that we deserve. I'm proud to second my next speaker because he understand it, that when we talk about lack of diversity in government, it's not only a voice at the city wide or the state level wide. There's 10,000 leadership positions in the agency of New York City. Only 200 are Latinos. So we need to check, not only the council, we need to check the city 
and we need to check the state. It's not enough to dance a merengue, quebradita, or bachata to say that we identify with the culture. It's about putting our effort, working 24 7. So with Corey Johnson, not only do we have a friend, a great speaker, but he will work 24 7 to bring the diversity that we deserve, where black, Asian, white, and Latino live to the opportunity that we deserve. Everyone has lived discrimination in this city, from the Jews to the Irish to the Italians to the Asian, to the Latino, and to the American. It is time for us to work together to build a New York City full opportunity for everyone. And I have no doubt that with Speaker Johnson, we will have a voice. Thank you, congratulations. Hearing no further candidates, I now close the nominations and direct the clerk to call the roll. Council members, when your name is called, please state the name of the nominee you are electing. Roll. Ad Adams. I am proud to cast the first vote for the next speaker of the New York City Council, Council Member Corey Johnson. Ampre, Sam Ampre Samuel. I will be voting for Corey Johnson. Ayala. Corey Johnson. Barron. I proudly cast my vote for myself, Inez Barron. <laughs> Brannon. On behalf of the people of Bay Ridge, Diker Heights, Bath Beach, and Bensonhurst, I proudly cast my vote for Corey Johnson. Good luck. Borelli. Corey Johnson. Good luck. Cabrera. Corey Johnson. Chin. I proudly vote for Corey Johnson. Cohen. Corey Johnson. Constantinides. Proudly vote for my friend and future speaker, Corey Johnson. Carnegie. Corey Johnson. Combo. Permission to explain my vote? So ordered. I want to congratulate everyone who put forward uh, their desire to be the speaker of the New York City Council. Today, again, I salute Council Member Barron uh, for continuing to be the voice and the consciousness of the body, and yours is a critical voice that continues to push us all further and to expand the realm of possibilities of what can happen. I proudly vote today for my very good friend, who I know is going to represent us with class, dignity, strength, and most importantly, inclusiveness in this entire body. And I'm proud to work with you, and I'm proud to work with this body, and I proudly vote for Corey Johnson. Deutsch. Uh, of course, Chaim Johnson. I mean, uh, Corey Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Diaz. So ordered. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Speaker, to be, Mr. Clerk, ladies and gentlemen, I am new today in this chamber, and I know that during this proce process, there were so many good candidates, so many, uh, fr some of them friends of, friends of mine, Richie Torres, Robert Carnegie, they were well qualified, good friends. And one of them, like Daniel Rodriguez, that went all the way out to join me in my aspiration to come here. So, but out of all of them, that was a person, that was a man, that was a, uh, a person that showed so, such a human sensitivity, such a, 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 a skill. I could, I could call that. Because I was in a hospital two years ago with a major surgery. <coughs> major surgery. And I was there with my family. But suddenly the, the door opened and there came a person that don't believe what I believe, a man that doesn't agree with what I say, a man that I have nothing in common, that I don't even knew about by that time. And he came with a friend of mine, Senator Tom Duane, to visit me. We're there, 
When he left, I told my wife and to myself, this guy would be, it would be very difficult for anyone else to beat him or to, to outmark him because they all, were, they all were well qualified, they all were, yeah, but this person, Mr. Corey Johnson, came to see me in the hospital and showed not only that he's skilled, not only that he's qualified, not only that he's had the experience, not only that he's the best, he showed a human uh, sensitivity. And that's why today I'm proud to vote for Mr. Corey Johnson. Drum. Permission to explain my vote? So ordered. Thank you very much. Um, today is a historic day for those of us in the LGBT community. We are electing the first openly gay, first openly HIV positive speaker of the New York City Council. It should also be noted that we're joined by Senator Tom Duane, who 30 years ago was also the first openly gay <laughs> HIV positive person. elected to the city council. And as um, somebody who uh, has been an openly gay teacher in the New York City public school system, Corey's election today is going to send a clear message of hope to all youth in New York City that if you're LGBT, all things are possible. I proudly cast my vote for Corey Johnson. Thank you. Espinal. Permission to explain my vote? So ordered. So it's no secret that Corey Johnson is a good friend of mine. I actually met him before we ran for office, and uh, we came out of a restaurant. It was about 11 p.m., and he had a clipboard collecting signatures at 11 p.m. in the middle of Manhattan. And I was walking with him and thinking to myself, who is crazy enough to do this? But I learned that he was doing this every single night because he was determined, because the dude works hard. So when we got elected to the council, I told him early on, you should run for speaker. And I did that not because um, we were friends because he showed me that he works hard. I've learned that he's compassionate. I learned that he's dedicated to this body and he lives and breathes this city and he lives and breathes the work he does. And I am confident that he will work hard to make sure that we're all represented well in the city council. So I proudly vote I and I probably vote for Corey Johnson. Eugene. Corey Johnson. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? So ordered. Thank you so much, Mr. Clerk, and good afternoon to all of my colleagues. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. I first and foremost want to congratulate all of my colleagues for beginning a new term, and certainly my warmest regards and welcome to all of our new colleagues who are joining us here in the City Council family. I want to join Councilmember Cumbo in acknowledging the strength and the courage of Councilmember Inez Barron. Thank you for always speaking truth to power, and I look forward to working with you as a member of the Women's Caucus. Um, today is certainly a great day in the City Council. I am so honored and privileged to join with all of you in calling Councilmember Corey Johnson one of my friends as well. I am so honored because he and I work together as I introduced my very first piece of legislation here in the Council, which amended the Student Safety Act of 2015 to focus on breaking down the school pipeline to prison and addressing school discipline understanding the disproportionate impact that these harsh penalties have on low-income students of color and students with disabilities and LGBTQ students and immigrant students. And certainly after that, Corey and I have worked closely together on so many pieces of legislation, on fighting to end the AIDS epidemic, on funding for runaway and homeless youth, and certainly resources for many of our young people like summer youth. Uh, Matthew 22:14 says, for many are called, but few are chosen. God has chosen you for such a time as this to lead this incredible city council. God may guide your path and your leadership of public service. I will always, always support you, and I pray that in this new role you always remain humble and thankful for your blessings. You have the passion, the purpose, and God has given you the plan to lead this body forward. Onward and upward, my friend, my colleague, I look forward to our partnership in this season. May God bless you. I proudly cast my vote for my colleague and my friend, Corey Johnson. Love you. Jonai. 
For the captain on the field and off the field, Corey Johnson. <laughs> Gordenchik. May I briefly explain my vote? So on. Uh, I first want to recognize uh, two living legends in the city of New York, Mayor David Dinkins and Speaker Peter Vallone. <laughs> future speaker just told me that that comes off my speaking time, but I'll, I'll forge forward. I got to know Corey very well when we went to Israel uh, this past February, and myself and him and our dear friend Fernando Cabrera spent a wonderful day in and around the holy old city of Jerusalem. And I also learned that day that the most dangerous place in the old city is between Corey Johnson and a pomegranate uh, juice vendor. He likes that, uh, he likes to drink pomegranate juice. <laughs> Corey, we had a wonderful day. We visited so many holy places. And this young man who grew up in New York City public housing proudly casts his vote that's entrusted to him by the people of the 23rd District for you, the next speaker, Corey Johnson. Thank you. Holden. Corey Johnson. Johnson. Corey Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Kalos. Proud to vote for my friend for over the past 10 years from the Mark Green campaign, a partner in reform and someone who will stand up for this body and its members, Corey Johnson. King. Peace and blessings to all in 2018. I just asked on a special day for my family, which would have been my dad's 81st birthday, I want to say to Corey Johnson, you have my vote and may your perseverance in life be a guiding light to leadership over this body. Congratulations. Who? I proudly support my friend, my colleague, Kobe Johnson. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? So ordered. I too want to recognize our past mayor, Mayor Dinkins, and my speaker, Peter Vallone, and Scott Stringer, and Tish James. I've worked with all of them. But I also want to recognize Corey's mom. Always remember it's because of her that Corey is here. <laughs> <laughs> I proudly cast my vote for Corey Johnson. Lanceman. Corey Johnson. Lander. With congratulations and with optimism at working together toward a more just, compassionate, and inclusive New York City, Corey Johnson. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? So ordered. Thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. I am incredibly um, proud and um, humbled to be able to vote for my good friend Corey Johnson for speaker. Um, Corey represents uh, the best in public service, um, honesty, decency, character, grit, and compassion. And I know that he will lead this body with all of those principles at the forefront. So on behalf of my daughter, Frances, uh, and all of the residents of the 33rd District, I vote proudly uh, for my friend Corey Johnson. Levine. Permission to explain my vote? So ordered. Okay, thank you, Madam. Thank you. I'm, it's not Madam Public Advocate today, it's Mr. City Clerk. Happy to have you in that role. Uh, I want to offer my heartfelt congratulations to Councilmember Johnson. I know the Council will benefit from his passion, from his fighting spirit and from his smarts. We need your talents, Corey. The speakership is an incredibly difficult job, even in the best of times, more so now when our city faces so many daunting challenges. 
but I know you are up to the task and we need you to succeed. We need our speaker to succeed for the good of this body and for the good of this city. And so I look forward to supporting you as we confront the challenges ahead. And to my colleagues, over the past year or so, I had the opportunity to spend time with each and every one of you in your neighborhoods, campaigning with you, seeing you in action at local events, soaking in the energy of your district offices, sharing countless meals with you in local restaurants and coffee shops. And I came away utterly inspired by the unique ways in which each of you pour your heart and soul into improving the lives of your constituents and into having an impact on this city. New Yorkers are incredibly lucky to be represented by you. And I am incredibly lucky that I get to serve with all of you over the next four years. I look forward to working with each of you and with our soon-to-be speaker, Corey Johnson, on behalf of the body and the city that we all love so much. And I, of course, will be proudly casting my vote for Corey Johnson. Mizell. Corey Johnson. Matteo. Corey Johnson. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote. So ordered. Thank you. So we start this new session, this new city council session, with great hope and with great courage. The hope to continue to stand up and the courage to move into sincere and effective action. We are the voice of our neighbors in our districts. Our New Yorkers, our families, place their faith in us to represent. But this council is divided. You just heard a black woman rise and put herself out there. And she's expressing her hope and her courage. And that is why I stood up after to make sure that I acknowledge that and to support that as we continue this new session with great hope and with great courage. I cast my vote today for an exceptional, hardworking man. Yes, a gay man, and yes, someone who is HIV positive, but beyond that, he is someone that has great compassion and understanding. For me, he came out and helped me win my race. He stood with me at the doors and understood from the people directly what the issues were. He walked through NYCHA with me. He walked to the waterfront, and he understands. He did that with so many of you. And so today, we are not going to be defined by our roles or our committee chairmanships. We are going to be defined by the unity that we place in ourselves as a body. Our house starts a little divided, and I put that accountability on you, on me, and everyone else in this room to unite for the work that is ahead. Thank you, and I cast my vote for Corey Johnson. Miller. Listen to explain my vote. So ordered. Thank you. I, like many of my colleagues in this room, uh, in particular members of the Black Latino Asian Caucus, Progressive Caucus, and many of, uh, from the communities that we serve throughout the city also uh, was of the mindset and shared the values that it was time for a speaker of color. For sure that we have embodied that and worked toward that goal uh, for several months now. Um, but that did not come to fruition. Uh, it became obvious that it would not come to fruition. But Corey Johnson is not a consolation. Corey, Corey Johnson is an ally. Corey Johnson is the cream that rises to the top and became speaker of this body here, this great body that we all represent. And we will collectively work to nurture and cultivate that next generation. We will collectively make sure and ensure that we represent, uh, we are represented and that we do have a speaker of color in this body here as we move forward. But it, I will be honored and privileged to serve with my neighbor and little brother over the next four years. I vote for Corey Johnson. Thank you. Moya. Proudly vote for Corey Johnson. Perkins. Thank you. As per the uh, stern instructions of my wife, Pam, <laughs> I obediently and proudly vote for Corey Johnson. <laughs> Powers. 
Uh, I support Corey Johnson. Congratulations. Good luck. And I'll see you where we meet in Times Square. <laughs> Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? So ordered. I just want to, I want to speak in Spanish a bit. Corey, I'll translate for you later. Uh, <laughs> uh, en este momento sabemos que vamos a recibir un liderazgo con mucha integridad en uh, el concejal Corey Johnson que tenemos en este momento, un hombre que ha llegado de aquí en Nueva York um, a, a ser un líder en la comunidad de LGBT um, y también es un hombre que es uh, positivo de VIH um, o VIH um, y ha logrado mucho en este momento. Sabemos que es uno de la, de la gente que ha trabajado más duro para ser portavoz hoy en este consejo municipal. Um, he tomado tiempo en, en nuestro hogar en Williamsburg, um, nada más un concejal, Rafael Espinal, que tiene más tiempo en Williamsburg que Corey Johnson. Um, y ese trabajo que ha hecho en uh, conocer nuestras comunidades latinas um, va a tener mucha ventaja para nosotros. Yo espero que cuando él sea uh, portavoz, que busque de liderazgo aquí latino, que no nada más está representado en lo que están de alto, pero también los concejales aquí uh, que tienen mucho valor. Um, otra vez, uh, un placer poder votar hoy por uh, pa portavoz uh, el concejal Corey Johnson. So I vote aye for Corey Johnson. Richards. Permission to explain my vote? So ordered. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. And first off, I'd like to start by thanking uh, my family, especially my wife uh, and my two-year-old son, uh, known as D3, uh, my staff, and all the people who encouraged, supported, and had a little faith that a young black man from Southeast Queens could become the New York City Council Speaker. In 2003, I arrived here at the City Council as an intern motivated to get involved in community service after the murder of my childhood friend, Darnell Patterson, wanted to change the world and to keep his legacy alive. Who would have ever imagined nearly 15 years later that I would have been a contender for the New York City Council speakership? To Darnell and those who saw something in me that I did not see in myself, I hope I made you proud. To my colleagues who had to endure meeting after meeting with me for the past year explaining my path to victory, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an honor to learn about your districts and see your passion to get work done for your communities. I hope you enjoyed the cups of coffee, lunches, and dinners while they lasted, because you will be footing the bill for yourselves from oh, now on. Man. But in all seriousness, I've been so honored and humbled to be merrily mentioned in the conversation among seven and now eight of my colleagues who decided to run for speaker. To all of you who had the courage to run, I want you to know you've all gained my highest respect. No one will truly know the sacrifice we all made, including giving up family time, countless resources, vulnerability, and most of all, our own well-being because we love this city so much that we wanted to fight to make it a better place. Every one of us brought a unique voice and story to this merry-go-round of a race. Thank you, Joe Crowley in the Bronx. We, are, we were all just in a tidbit waiting for <laughs> this thing to be done. From Richie Torres, a product of public housing, to Edonis Rodriguez, who was a dishwasher at 18 years old and who emerged as a major voice for the immigrant community. And lastly, another young man who knows firsthand what it means to face the same issues as so many other New Yorkers. Hailing from Massachusetts to a teenage mother just like myself, born in a union household, having the courage to come out publicly in high school, and then again as being HIV positive, and someone who will now assume the role of the second most powerful position in city, given, in city government, Speaker Corey Johnson. I'm wrapping up. Corey, it's been a true honor to sit next to you in these chambers and serve with you over the past four years. There's no doubt in my mind that over the next four years, you will lead this body in a direction that will ensure the most marginalized communities have a voice in their city government. At a time when looming federal disinvestment over our city budget and policies are being put in place that threaten this diverse metrop metrop metropolis we call New York City, I have faith that Corey Johnson will be the leader we need to get through these times. I also have to acknowledge Inez Barron because there's a lot of truth in what she said. But on this day, I vote for Speaker Corey Johnson, my good friend, and who will no longer be my neighbor, to be the speaker. God bless you, and congratulations, and I wish you Godspeed. Thank you.
Rivera. Permission to explain my vote, my so vote very briefly. So among the incredible candidates, um, you are all really amazing, and I've, I've had a real privilege getting to know all of you over the past few months. Um, today, I am proud to cast my vote for a friend from whom I've learned so much. Corey, I think we recognize in each other a relentless work ethic and an incredible admiration for our mothers. And of course, a love for our communities and taking care of all New Yorkers. You've been incredibly supportive, and I look forward to showing you that same respect over the next four years. Inez, thank you for standing up. As one of only 11 women, you, your strength is inspiring, and I wanna thank you for doing that. And to everyone here, I'm so excited for the next four years. It's been an awesome birthday so far, and I'm really looking forward to it. So today, I proudly cast my vote for Corey Johnson for speaker. Thank you. Rodriguez. Since let's play my vote. So ordered. Thank you, Congressman Crowley, for your leadership in the city and in our nation. We need more voices like you standing for immigrants as we are on the attack. To our friend here, Corey, I know that he will be marching with us, organizing with us, fighting for immigrants. Hoy es un día histórico para nosotros como ciudad. Hoy estamos construyendo una voz construyendo una ciudad de Nueva York para todos. Una ciudad de Nueva York donde los latinos exigimos. We are not begging, the Latinos are not begging, neither we are asking for favor. We are putting the number on the table. We are 29% of the New York City population. In the 1900 census, we are in a county. Our numbers are different today. But today we have an ally. And as I give credit to my great sister here and colleague, Okay, Council Member Byron, we will be working together in the committee that you'll be working. But I know that today is a matter of moving, continue moving forward. We cannot go backward as this president wants us to take us. We need leaders who understand that we are in the same boat, that we were in the different place 100 years before, and now we have to put our vision for the next 100 years. Nosotros tenemos que seguir hacia adelante. Tenemos que seguir construyendo una ciudad de Nueva York donde la clase trabajadora viva con dignidad y que llevemos a clase media a los niños de esa clase trabajadora, donde la educación sea para todos los niños, no por los sicos. I hope that with my friends here, I will have, we will have a champion fighting the most segregated education system in the whole nation being here in New York City. I hope that with my friend, we're going to be opening more door opportunities where the funding for the cultural affair should change and the black and Latino institution, they also should get the same funding as the other groups get. So, felicidades, y con muy orgulloso, hoy voto por Corey Johnson. Rose. Rosenthal. Corey Johnson, may I explain my vote? So ordered. Thank you. I want to start by congratulating Council Member Johnson. You know, it's the only out member of the body who supported Mark Levine. I did not get taken out for meals. No one visited my district. Uh, no one helped me. But, and I released Mark so he would be helping others. Um, but I have to tell you, Corey, over the last month, I've learned more about you than I had known about you over the last four years. And uh, I've come to understand and, and truly appreciate your hard work and your, um, your amazing abilities. Um, so together, under your leadership, I do believe this body will do a tremendous amount of good work for the people of the city of New York. Um, we're now positioned to build upon the foundation we've established over the past four years, and I'm thinking about our partnership and the council's efforts to attack the city's affordability crisis and all the work though that we have left to do, especially when it comes to protecting rent regulated tenants from harassment and displacement. Corey, you and I co-sponsored legislation that was one piece of the stand for tenant safety package and I know that you share this mission. 
We also have a responsibility to broaden this body's vision. For example, by taking on the city's public transportation crisis. I was so impressed when I saw in the papers about your vision for the MTA and your commitment to make sure that there are critical reforms to the MTA before we put in any new investment. I appreciate how eagerly you signed on to our letter calling for just that. In fact, you were the first person to sign on, and I think I asked you to sign on, so you possibly signed on twice. So I really do appreciate that. Um, and so because of these shared values, I'm proud to support my neighbor to the south. I look forward to your leadership and your partnership over the next four years. Thank you. Salamanca. I proudly vote for Corey Johnson. Thank you. Torres. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote? Just want to sure. say that sure. I feel a deep affinity with Corey. The two of us are products of strong mothers, products of self-education. Corey might be actually the best resident historian of New York City political history in the New York City Council. And I'm under clear instructions from the most important person in my life, my mother, to vote for Corey Johnson. So, Traeger. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote? So ordered. Uh, no, I'm just joking. Why not? Okay. Um, I'd like to first uh, commend all of the speaker candidates, including my uh, Brooklyn colleague, Councilmember Inez Barron, who all worked uh, very hard. Uh, this, this is not an easy process, and I commend all of them for their courageous hard work and their sacrifice, including my colleague as well here, Mark Levine. Uh, as, a proud, uh, as a proud son to Ukrainian Jewish immigrants, the only Russian-speaking member of this body, as a proud former public school teacher who believes in the promise and the power of public institutions, and as the proud son of Brooklyn, my home beloved borough, I proudly cast my vote for Corey Johnson. Ulrich. I'm proud to vote for my good friend Corey Johnson. I also want to offer my heartfelt congratulations to our newly reelected minority leader of the Republican delegation, Steve Matteo. Uh, it's, it'll be an honor to serve another four years with him as he leads a delegation of three and a half, maybe four. I think we're still working on that, but uh, I don't know uh, how that's going to we'll, we'll know at the next state and how that turns out. But uh, we know for today who the speaker is, and uh, he's a wonderful guy. He's going to do a terrific job. Uh, I'll let Bob speak for himself later. Anyway, but, uh, but Steve is uh, a phenomenal uh, advocate for a small but very important minority in this body, and I'm proud to call him a friend and colleague and my leader. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. Valone. Permission to explain my vote? So ordered. Thank you. You know, it's, it's a very rare thing when you get to rise in the presence of your parents, and the greatest man I've ever known is here today and he has spent his whole life for each one of us to create this amazing body called the City Council to give us say, my father, Peter Malone. It was over 30 years ago that he was elected our very first speaker. Uh, and for, as of 2018 now, Dad, your, your legacy continues. Your sons have gone on now for 45 years in a row there has been a balloon in city council. And that is because of your stewardship, your leadership, your faith, family, and country have always been with you. They are in this body today because of you. And I proudly vote for my brother who will be the next speaker who will follow in your footsteps, Corey Johnson. Williams. Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote? So ordered. Thank you very much. I came out of the closet in 1989, and one of the first things I did was see uh, the documentary film, The Life and Times of Harvey Milk. And Harvey Milk's victory uh, in the 70s uh, sent a message to all LGBT people uh, that we could fight back and that we could use political change to affect societal change that would give us the ability to be who we are. Uh, and I decided that my life would be about uh, getting involved in politics and empowering the LGBT community through electoral work. 
In the summer of 1991, I spent the entire summer volunteering for Tom Duane. And I was there that night in September of 91 on 8th Avenue in Chelsea at his victory party. And I looked around as a very young gay man and saw older gay men and women crying, literally in tears. It was so powerful to elect openly LGBT people to office. Uh, and I am proud to be one of now five openly LGBT members in this council, but also very proud to elevate today an openly gay man to that position of speaker of the city council. It was only about a month ago at Joe Crowley's holiday party that Corey Johnson and I sat down and I explained to him that I would be proud to vote for him as speaker because that would mean uh, for me also that part of my work was continuing, elevating the LGBT community, making sure that so many people all over the city, all over the country could see us in positions of power, strong people, proud people, effective people working not just on LGBT issues, but all issues. I also want to say thank you to Corey's mom, because there are few things as beautiful and as important as a mother's love for her gay son. Thank you. And just to end with a quote, because Harvey Milk, all of us who are LGBT elected officials stand on the shoulders of all those who came before us, including Harvey Milk. And he said, uh, while he was still alive, if you are not personally free to be yourself in that most important of all human activities, the expression of love, then life itself loses its meaning. Corey, today you join Harvey Milk in that pantheon of LGBT leaders. I proudly vote for Corey Johnson. Thank you. Jaeger. I vote, Mr. Chairman. So would. Thank you. Um, when your name begins with Y, you quickly learn two things. Uh, everything that you wish to say has been said, um, and keep your remarks brief because I stand between my colleagues and the door. Um, so I, I will just speak very briefly, and I also know there's a clock on me, Mr. Chairman. Um, to my colleagues, my new colleagues, some are old friends, some are new friends, uh, the eight of you. Uh, who did not win today, uh, who put your names forward to become speaker of this body. I congratulate you for making me a better council member for the next four years, I believe you did, uh, for making this body stronger for the next four years, I believe you did, and for engaging in a process that gave us a speaker who I believe will continue in the great tradition of one of my mentors, Speaker Vallone. Um, Corey uh, has shown himself over the last couple of years as he's campaigned throughout the city as he's talked to people long before I was in a race for city council. Uh, an understanding of our neighborhoods, an understanding of our issues, um, and as Councilmember Rosenthal said, I've learned more in the last four weeks, I think, than I learned in the last four years, uh, even though I've known Councilmember Johnson in various capacities over the last couple of years, uh, probably over a decade. Um, he is somebody who will bring his drive, his compassion, his understanding of every different type of community, uh, the ones that I represent, and I believe the ones that Councilmember Barron represents uh, throughout our city. And he will serve us with honor, with integrity, um, with love for an institution that you have made better. I cast my vote for you, Corey Johnson, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. The council member duly elected as the Speaker of the Council of the City of New York for the term commencing January 1, 2018 and terminating December 31, 2021 is council member Corey Johnson. Mr. Speaker, you have the floor.
Thank you. Thank you all. I love you, Mom. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get this show on the road. I want to uh, say thank you to my friends and my colleagues. I want to thank you all for your support. Words cannot express how honored and humbled I am by the confidence that you've placed in me. I'd like to recognize some of the honored guests who are here with us in the room today. Former Mayor of the City of New York, David Dinkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. He's been acknowledged many times and he deserves it. Former Speaker of the New York City Council, Peter Vallone Sr. One of the most decent, honorable, good guys and human beings that I've ever been able to get to know in politics our incredible Congressman Joe Crowley from Queens. I want to recognize him. And I want to thank Jerry Sweeney and Mike Reich and Anne-Marie Anzalone, who are up in the balcony as well. A former member of this body who now represents our great city in Congress, uh, Congresswoman Yvette Clark, who's in the balcony. Our public advocate, Letitia James. She and I danced together in the Pride Parade. We're gonna keep that going. Our great controller and my former Manhattan Borough President, who was very helpful to me when I was on the community board before I was elected to the council, Comptroller Scott Stringer. <laughs> Assemblymember Charles Barron was here. He may have left, but I wanted to recognize him as a former member of this body and as his great wife and our colleague said, someone who presented himself for speaker eight years ago. I want to recognize Councilmember Barron and his presence here today. Uh, someone who preceded me in this seat, who broke barriers long before I came around, who ran for office as an openly gay man, who came out about his HIV status at the height of the epidemic when protease inhibitors did not exist, when people were dying. He ran the first time and barely lost to Carol Greitzer, and then ran the second time and had an overwhelming victory, the first openly gay member of this body, my friend and a mentor and a family member to me, a former state senator and former council member, Tom Duane. I want to acknowledge former Assemblyman Keith Wright, the chair of the Manhattan uh, Democratic Party, for his support. I want to recognize former council member uh, Dr. Una Clark, who's sitting up in the balcony. One of my closest, dearest friends, I don't see him here, but I'm sure he's here, former council member Jimmy Vaca. Where is he? Former council member and former minority leader of this body, uh, council member Vinnie Ignizio, who's here. <laughs> former council member Dominic M. Recchia Jr., who's in the house. <laughs> former council member and the former chair of the Land Use Committee, council member David Greenfield, who just started a big new important job for the city of New York. A former council member and a savant when it comes to political history, my friend Mark Weprin, who's up in the balcony. 
Former council member Diana Reyna, who preceded Antonio Reynoso in this body. Former council member at large, he's not that old, council member Ed Wallace, who's here as well. I want to acknowledge an incredible labor leader in this city, someone who was one of my biggest supporters, someone who has been thoughtful, honest, and an incredible advocate for his members, someone who I've gotten to know in an incredible way and who I am deeply, deeply grateful for his friendship and support, the president of the Hotel and Motel Trades Council, uh, President Peter Ward, who's here. I want to acknowledge uh, Gerard Fitzgerald, the president of the Uniform Firefighters Association. <laughs> president George Miranda of Teamsters Joint Council 16. <laughs> amazing guy and labor leader in our city, the president of the Central Labor Council, uh, Vinny Alvarez. And there are other labor leaders who were not able to be here today, and I look forward to thanking them in person for all they did in this process. Even if they didn't support me, they played a very important role in the process, and they play a really important role in the city of New York. So I want to thank all of you for your dedication and service uh, to uh, New York City. Uh, to my good friends, Robert, Idanis, Jimmy, Mark, Donovan, Jumani, who's not here today, Richie, and Inez. I'm inspired by each one of you and your dedication to your constituents, your districts, and the city of New York. I'm proud to call you friends, and I look forward to learning from you and partnering with you to do great things over the next four years. Some people who are very special to me are here today. I don't want to get emotional, but... One person in particular, my mom, Anne, uh, drove down from Massachusetts uh, to be here. Um, my, uh, my family never had it easy. And my mom worked incredibly hard to provide for my sister and me. She taught me the meaning of overcoming adversity, and she taught me what unconditional love is. She taught me the importance of service to others, and she taught me that fierce women get things done. <laughs> you are my best friend, you are my rock, and I wouldn't be here without you. I love you more than words can possibly describe. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> to my stepfather, Rod, who drove a Pepsi truck day in and day out to provide for his family and who died six months before I was elected to the city council and to my biological father who was adopted from Seoul, South Korea and brought here by an American couple when he was three years old and who died a few months into my first term who I never had the opportunity to meet. I wish you could both be here but I want you to know that I love you very much and I have no regrets. I have so many other people that I could thank. I could spend the next four years naming them. But all of you know who you are, and I am eternally grateful for your friendship and for your support. We stand on the shoulders of leaders who came before us. Again, I want to thank former Speaker Peter Vallone, who's with us today, Speaker Gifford Miller, Speaker Christine Quinn, and Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for their strong stewardship of this body. It is because of your leadership that my colleagues and I are inheriting a strong, inclusive, and independent city council. Over the last four years, under the leadership of Mayor de Blasio, Speaker Mark Viverito, and the members of this council, our city has made significant progress on a number of critical issues. Free universal pre-K for every four-year-old in New York City, historically low crime rates, and a dramatic decrease and the truly harmful and corrosive practice known as stop and frisk. Tens of thousands of new units of affordable housing, 
a dramatic drop in traffic fatalities, the lowest unemployment rate in decades, paid sick leave and living wage laws that are benefiting working families without killing a single job in this city. But the problems and challenges we continue to face are of historic proportions. The affordability crisis gripping our city threatens the very existence of our neighborhoods. New Yorkers who have lived in the same community their entire lives now find themselves priced out, unable to afford their rent or even groceries. Many working families are living paycheck to paycheck, one missed shift or one medical expense away from eviction. Our shelter system is overflowing with families who are working full-time jobs but can't afford homes for themselves and for their children. Mom and pop small businesses are finding themselves unable to compete with deep pocketed chain stores. Subway riders are experiencing the consequences of years of disinvestment in our infrastructure. And shamefully, racial disparities persist in nearly every aspect of life, including life expectancy, health outcomes, criminal justice, and education. And the coming fiscal realities presented by Washington and Albany will only deepen the challenges that we face. These problems are incredibly complex and entrenched, but the future of our city depends on our ability to confront them. And confront them we will. We believe in a New York where every person has access to good paying jobs, affordable housing, quality health care, and good public schools. We believe that small business owners with big dreams should be given a fighting chance to succeed without getting evicted from their storefronts. We believe the poorest New Yorkers should have access to public transit that they can afford. We believe that women must be properly represented in government, and that includes here in the New York City Council. We believe, we believe that a person's health outcome should not be determined by their zip code. We believe that no person should be stopped and frisked based on the color of their skin. We believe that in a New York where no, we believe in a New York where no one is targeted simply because of who they are. Muslim New Yorkers, immigrants, the undocumented, Jewish New Yorkers, transgendered New Yorkers. We reject hate in all of its forms and stand united against bigotry and racism during these difficult times. There has never been a more important time to ensure that our city has a strong, unified, and independent council to take on these challenges. I know that with the immense talent, wisdom, and experience of this body and of all of you, we will prevail. And we must defend these principles while renewing our focus on the hyper-local issues that our constituents ask us for help with every day. Residents of all neighborhoods are entitled to clean and safe streets, well-maintained public parks, and city agencies that are actually responsive to their needs. Running for speaker took me to nearly every neighborhood in all five boroughs. If I ever write a book about the speaker's race, which I don't think I ever will, I'm going to call it the end of the line because I rode literally every subway line to the final stop many, many times. I don't own a car. One thing that struck me as I spoke with the New Yorkers around the city was how much their council members mean to them. People care deeply about their neighborhoods and they see their local council member as their neighborhood champion, their advocate down at City Hall. We are the people's house the voice of millions of New Yorkers wake up every single morning in Brooklyn, in Queens, in the Bronx, on Staten Island, in Manhattan. New Yorkers who head to work or school or church to build their futures, brick by brick, block by block. Their voices, your voices, need and deserve to be heard. We have one mission 
to better the lives of our constituents who day and night place their trust in us to represent their interests and advocate for their needs. We must not and will not forget who sent us here. We are the bodega owner in Bay Ridge, forced to choose between keeping the lights on and buying his daughter's textbooks. We are the teachers at PS150 in Sunnyside, Queens, who nurture the hearts and minds of their children, but lay awake at night wondering how to afford necessary supplies for the classroom while still making their own rent. We are the senior citizen in Hell's Kitchen who wonders if next year she'll be able to climb up to her fourth floor walk up. We are the high school graduate in the Bronx who gets a scholarship to her dream college. We are the homeowners on the southernmost tip of Staten Island, you hear that Borelli? <laughs> who keep watch for the next storm and wonder if we are truly ready. We carry these voices in us. Their stories motivate us to work harder, to sleep even less, and to be ever more responsive to their needs. If we become unmoored and lose our way, we need only listen to the voices of those who we represent to correct our course. At this time, 32 years ago, in this very chamber, in this very room, the city council considered legislation that would finally outlaw discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation in housing, employment, and public accommodations. As the AIDS epidemic was decimating and ravaging the gay community, supporters and opponents of the bill engaged in a long and bitter fight in this very chamber. The city council passed that bill. Opponents said, the bill would lead to societal acceptance of the LGBT community. And guess what? They were right. <laughs> Let us continue to take on the important issues that may be considered controversial today, but will be indisputable tomorrow. Let us continue to use the power of this body to expand opportunity for all and be the voice for the voiceless, the champions of the most vulnerable. Let us continue to be a source of light and love and hope in this very turbulent world. Dear colleagues, I am incredibly honored by the confidence that you have placed in me. I have the chill saying it. To Adrian, Alan, Alika, Andy, Andy, Antonio, Barry, Ben, Bill, Brad, Carlina, Carlos, Chaim, Chaim, <laughs> Costa, Danique, Daniel, Danny, Deborah, Diana, Donovan, Eric, Francisco, Fernando, Helen, Inez, Jimmy, Joe, Jumani, Justin, Kalman, Karen, I love you, Karen. <laughs> Lori, Margaret, Mark G, Mark L, and Mark T. <laughs> Matthew, Paul, Peter, Raphael L, and Raphael S. Richie and Rob, Robert, Rory, Reverend Ruben Sr., Steve, Stephen, Vanessa, and Edonis. I don't know if I could do that in a memorized way. I want you to know that in good times and in bad, through thick and thin, I will always have your back. Those who you supported me, those who didn't support me, those who ran for speaker, and those who have been here in this body, and those who are new, I will have your back in this body. I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank you for your friendship. I want to get to work. And lastly, I want to, to end with just with this story, which I, I didn't plan on telling today. You know, my mom is my best friend, as you all know, and, and really the, the, the love of my, of my life. And 
I talked a little bit about uh, my growing up, and I don't want my actually dear Republican friends to be offended by this story uh, because they are incredibly valuable members of this body and close friends of mine. When I came out at 16 years old, I was suicidal, despondent, and didn't want to live. I told my mother that I was gay, and she told me that she loved me unconditionally without hesitating. A few months later, the patriarch of our family, my grandfather, who had 10 children, my mom's one of 10, and had nearly 60 grandchildren who helped raise me, my mom dropped me off at his house for me to give him the news that I was gay. And he was an 82-year-old, old Irish Catholic guy who went to mass every single day. And I walked into his home, and when I walked in, he said, Corey, sit down, we're going to make you supper. So I sat down, and he looked at me and said, what's the matter? And I said, oh, Grandpa, I, I have something to tell you. And he said, you're killing me, spit it out. And I said, well, I, I told Mom and Dad uh, that I'm gay. And he says, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I thought you were going to tell me you were a Republican. <laughs> he says, you can be gay, you just have to be a Democrat. Well, um, I look up, well, Grandpa, I've lived up to that end of the bargain. I am gay, and I am a Democrat, and each one of us in this body has a story like that. Every single one of us, no matter where we've come from, no matter what our unique life experience is, that is the great thing about our city. It's the most diverse city in the world. I came here on a wing and on a prayer and on a dream with two bags at the age of 19 years old, knowing two people, not knowing where I was going to live. Each one of us have that experience. This body is an incredible body because of the work and influence and power that we have to shape and change and support the lives of eight and a half million New Yorkers. I look forward to doing that with all of you. Thank you very, very much. Mr. Uh, quiet, please, quiet, please. Mr. Clerk, pursuant to Rule 3.00 of the Rules of the City Council, I hereby, I hereby call upon Letitia James, public advocate for the City of New York, to serve as acting president pro tempore of this body. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker. Messages and papers from the mayor? None. None. Oh. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Quiet in the chambers, please. Petitions and communications? M3, nomination and election of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. I nominate the following council members as members of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections of the City Council. Uh, as temporary chair of this body, I'd like to nominate uh, Council Member Rory Lansman. I'd like to also nominate council members Adrian Adams, Margaret Chin, Robert Cornegie, Rafael Espinal, Vanessa Gibson, myself, Corey Johnson, Karen Kozlowitz, Minority Leader Stephen Matteo, Richie Torres, and Mark Traeger. Oh, uh, for this roll call, the question on the floor is whether the council would agree with and adopt such nominations. Will the clerk call the roll? Adams. Councilmember Adams. I vote aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Aye. Brannon. 
Aye. Borelli. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegy. Aye. Combo. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Yes. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Aye. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Johnson. Speaker aye. Johnson. Excuse me. How about I? It's okay, Billy. I have to get used to it, too. The item passed 49 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. M4, designation of minority leader. Mr. Speaker. Uh, at the duly convened meeting, uh, this is for the Republican minority le leader to read, I believe. I want to call upon minority leader Stephen Matteo to make brief remarks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, first, I would like to welcome back my returning colleagues and wish everyone a happy, healthy, and safe New Year. I'd also like to welcome our new colleagues who are standing in this chamber for the first time as duly elected council members. Uh, I remember how that felt almost as, as if it was yesterday. It's inspiring and it's an unforgettable feeling. My advice to you is to soak in this moment. Also remember when you bang your head against the wall during budget hearings that seem to have no end. Um, I look forward to getting to know each of you, to working with you, and certainly to opposing legislation that you introduce. <laughs> that is a joke, not really. <laughs> I want to thank my Republican colleagues for once again choosing me to lead the minority delegation. I am humbled and honored by your confidence. While we are a small number, the Republicans in this body play a vital role as strong but respectful voices of dissent and fierce advocates for everyday New Yorkers, homeowners, and the middle class and for all those who do not believe that more government is a solution to every perceived problem. Picking up on the veterans tax exemption we passed last year, this delegation will continue our goal of providing much needed property tax relief. I know many of our colleagues across the aisle share our priority to reform our city's inequitable property tax system and to provide more relief to families who are feeling the squeeze of the skyrocketing cost of living. We hope to work with our new speaker and our colleagues to make property tax relief a reality in 2018. For me personally, I look forward to continuing the venerable tradition of the City Council minor Minority Leader and working with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to hate, help shape this body's policies and legislation. This mantle was held with distinction by my predecessors from Staten Island, Vin Ignizio, and our now Borough President and my predecessor and political mentor, Jimmy Otto. Before I comment about our next speaker, I also want to thank all the speaker candidates who took the time to meet with me and our delegation to discuss their ideas about leading this body for the coming four years. We appreciated your willingness to seek common ground with us, even with our considerable ideological differences. For that, we thank you, and we look forward to working together in our new terms. I'd also like to thank uh, my wonderful mom who's home watching. I'd also like to thank my amazing wife, Annie, and to my dad, who is looking proudly down from heaven. Um, I couldn't be here without you and the rest of my family, so I wanted to thank you. I love you all. Our delegation is always put in a rather awkward situation when it comes to the speaker's race. 
Let's face it, the Republican delegation is going to vote for someone with whom we will disagree most of the time. So the race comes down to more than simply qualifications and policy positions for us. It comes down to someone who we, we, will, we believe we will be able to work with us on those issues with which we can agree. For me personally, it also came down to someone who has already proven he can do just that. Well before I became minority leader and well before the speaker campaign began, Corey Johnson and I developed not just a great professional rel relationship, but a personal bond. I have come to trust and respect him, to know his decency as a person, and despite our ideological differences, to appreciate his commitment to this body and to making the city a better place to live for everyone. I believe in this institution. I believe in the important work we do on a daily basis, whether it's passing legislation, passing a budget, providing constituent services, or holding agencies accountable. I believe it is our responsibility to improve the quality of life of those we represent. I know that our new speaker believes that as well. I believe his hard work and dedication as a member and throughout the speaker's race is a sign of things to come. I know that we will work to find common ground to achieve our shared goals for our constituents. As his friend, I am very happy to have been able to cast my vote for Corey as Speaker of this Council. Our friendship certainly transcends politics. As the Minority Leader, I am confident that he will treat our delegation fairly and with an open mind and that he will continue to work together on those issues upon which we do agree. If nothing else, history is on our side. The combination of a Minority Leader from the 50th Council District and a Speaker from the 3rd Council District has produced some pretty good results from our constituents in the past. While Corey and I have big shoes to fill, I am confident we can build on that success, and I look forward to getting to work on behalf of our constituents and all New Yorkers. And with that, I congratulate my friend, Corey Johnson, for speaker. M5, designation of minority whip. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. This charter meeting of January 3rd, 2018 is hereby adjourned. Thank We're you adjourned. all very much.